Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge here with another Affinity Designer tutorial. In this video, I'm going to take an in-depth look at Affinity Designer's contour tool. The contour tool is used to offset a vector path or text, moving its outline inwards or outwards to make the shape bigger or smaller. This can be useful for a range of tasks and I'll show you some practical examples which will help your workflow at the end of the video. So make sure you keep watching to the end. You'll find the contour tool here on the tools panel. Click it to select it. Alternatively, use the keyboard shortcut O. To demonstrate the basics, I'm going to create a vector square. Now, I'm selecting the contour tool and dragging right. This offsets the shape's outline, making the shape larger. If I drag to the left, the object's outline is moved inwards, making it smaller. The original edge location is shown by the blue line. The tool works with both fill and stroke shapes and you can switch between them while offsetting the path. There are some additional settings in the context toolbar here which allow the user to do more with the contour tool. Firstly, you can input a precise offset measurement here. A positive number will result in your shape getting larger and a negative number will make the shape smaller. To reset the edge to the original position, type zero. These settings control the contour type. You can choose between round, which is currently selected, mitre, which is classic squared edges, and beveled. You'll also notice there's a mitre setting here. This is only relevant when you have mitered corners and it controls the level of flat to pointed corners. It doesn't affect this shape, but can be handy with other shapes and type. I'll revisit it later in the video. The next settings are the contour cap options. As you can see, when I apply them to this fill shape, nothing happens. That's because these options work with lines only. To demonstrate, I'm going to draw a basic vector line using the pen tool. And then I'm going to use the contour tool to move the edge. The resulting shape is something more like a rectangle. So this is a handy way to convert a line into a rectangle or square. The contour cap buttons can now be used to further customize the shape. The ends can be converted to round, square or the default none. I'm next going to look at the contour fill options and I'll demonstrate with a cloud shape. The default contour fill option is auto closed, which is a closed path, just as you see here. If I use the contour tool to offset the edge and then click force open, it adds an outline to your shape, which looks like a stroke. To revert to a closed shape, hit force closed. Earlier, I mentioned the mitre setting and how it wasn't much use on a basic square. So to demonstrate this option, I'm going to create a star shape using Affinity's star tool. When I use the contour tool on the star, it defaults to the rounded corner option. But when I change it to mitre, I get these flat ends. To convert the ends to points, I'm going to increase the mitre number like this. This setting can also be useful when using the contour tool with type, which often has sharp angles. The final option on the context toolbar is bake appearance. And what this does is converts the shape you've been working on into curves. So up to this point, the star shape edge can be moved inwards or outwards, but the original shape position is remembered and shown by the inner blue line here. But once we press the bake appearance button, the shape is converted to curves and the contour tool settings are lost. But if you want to make further edge changes to your shape using the contour tool, you can start the process again. As promised, I wanted to share a few practical examples where the contour tool can come in handy. If you create any kind of digital graphics or illustrations, the contour tool is invaluable and you'll find yourself using it in nearly every project. I'm going to show you how to create a very simple rainbow design in just a few steps using the contour tool, plus a few other basic features. Why not try this yourself? Download the color palette that I'm using free via the link in the description below. Start by creating a circle using the ellipse tool. The color is unimportant. Making sure snapping is enabled by hitting the magnet button, if it isn't already. Use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle above the circle and move it so it interacts covering the bottom half of the circle. Select both shapes, then hit the subtract button. This will remove the bottom half of the circle. Now, on the layers panel, duplicate the semicircle so you have two copies. Then recolor the bottom instance blue, 
select the contour tool and type a value into the radius box and hit return. I'm typing three millimeters. You can make this value any number you like, but the bigger the value, the larger your rainbow bars will be. Set the contour type to mitre to add a square edge, then hit the bake appearance button to convert the shape to curves. Select and delete the bottom two nodes. Repeat the process by duplicating the blue semicircle, but this time recolor it purple. Repeat the process by duplicating the purple semicircle, but this time recolor it pink. Repeat the process by duplicating the pink semicircle, but this time recolor it red. Repeat the process by duplicating the red semicircle, but this time recolor it orange. Repeat the process by duplicating the orange semicircle, but this time recolor it yellow. Repeat the process by duplicating the yellow semicircle, but this time making it green. Recolor the top semicircle white. Duplicate it and place it above the purple shape on the layers panel. Repeat the process so that there's a semi-white circle above every coloured semicircle. Select the top white semicircle and blue semicircle and then hit the subtract button. Repeat the process for the other coloured shapes and their white counterparts. You can also use the contour tool to create eye-catching type. I'm going to type a word and then use the tool to create different coloured strokes at 1.5mm intervals. The technique is pretty much what I just showed with the rainbow, but I'm going to use fewer colours. The final thing I'm going to show is something I use the contour tool for all the time to create an accurate text path for use with a banner, badge or other shape. To demonstrate, I'm using a banner from the Artifacts Forge's Essential Shapes Affinity Assets bundle, a colossal vector shape library for Affinity Designer featuring banners, badges, labels, shields, speech bubbles and much more. The cloud shape I used earlier is also part of the pack. Follow the link in the description to learn more. To start, I'm going to drag the banner shape from the assets panel and recolor it. To create the text path, I'm going to duplicate the banner. I'm then going to convert the top copy into an offset path. To do this, I'll first change the stroke and fill so you can see it. Now that's visible, I'm going to use the contour tool to move the path edge into the banner shape. Next, I'm going to press the Bake Appearance button to convert the offset path to curves. We only need the bottom section of this curve for the text path, 
So I'm going to select two nodes and then hit the break curve button to split the shape. I'm now going to delete the unwanted section of the shape. This leaves us with an offset path which is ready to convert to a text path using the artistic text tool. Finally, I'll add my banner type. This hack will work with any situation where you need a text path and accurate distance from the edge of a shape. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please watch our other Affinity videos and follow our channel for more tips and tricks. And don't forget to follow the link below to artifactsforge.com to explore our massive range of Affinity brushes, textures and toolkits. You can pick up some freebies too. Thanks for stopping by.